tell you what. I cannot, woo, all right, recording going. I cannot think of two better people to bring on here to talk to you guys about how to attract more business coming into 2023. Especially these last couple of years, I'll tell you what, since I've known Rebecca and Host Way, they have done nothing but grow every single day. Whether it's their branding, their social media, how they're building their presence all across the country, as well as their local market here in Orlando. I am really excited to bring you guys on here. Two-time author, one-time best-selling author, Rebecca Soto and Host Way Soto. What's going on, guys? Hi, we're excited to be here. Thank you. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Yeah. Hey, did I, did I miss anything in the intro? I thought I did a pretty good job for you guys. Yes. So guys, here, here's what we're going here's what we're gonna want to do. Make sure if you guys have questions specifically for Rebecca and Josue, make sure you put them in the chat. We'll get to them as soon as we can. It'll be first come first serve with the question. I cannot guarantee you we'll get to all of them, but we'll get to as many as we can. So Rebecca and Host, why don't you tell us a little bit about your branding journey as it, as it comes to real estate? So uh, branding journey, I'm going to say that, you know, like everyone else in the beginning, we thought it was just about having a logo and what's our colors. <laughs> and and then, you know, we were we were kind of stuck because we're like, well, we want to build this brand. And people kept saying, what are you talking about? You are the brand. And the first time I heard that, I kept thinking, what do you mean we're the brand? People already know who you are. It's yeah. how you show up in your community. It's how you show up to your clients, to your yeah. agents. You know what? And by the way, I'm, I'm just curious, do we have like new agents in the room? Are we seasoned agents, team leaders? I'm, I'm just curious. Do nice. who I'm, Drop, drop it in the comments, yeah, drop, drop it in the, the chat. chat, whether you're a new agent, uh, solo agent, team lead broker, what, what stage of the business are you guys at? Awesome. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so as we, um, I, I honestly, I felt like in the very beginning, I was a little clueless about it, but of course I didn't let that get to me because I would just keep going out, doing my thing. We have our client database. We're very connected with them. Uh, we were you know, really strict work by referral in the beginning. And so really giving the client that experience of that one-on-one -on -one personal touch. And um, we focused on that. And then later we, we got into leadership with an organization and we we're just coming from a place of contribution. Yeah. looking for nothing else but to just give voluntarily and i learned a couple lessons uh during during that time and while i thought that i was giving to help build you know my community my my real estate community i felt like i was the one receiving i was the one that was personally growing and uh, and i didn't expect that and that and i think um I got a little bit of addicted to that because I was like, I like this feeling. I like helping other people and somehow it blesses me back and I don't need to receive anything back in return, but I just did. And yeah. I don't know, I guess that also comes from having a grateful heart because if, if you're grateful, you'll always see the positive side of that. So yeah. again, it goes back to, we were a brand yeah. and, um, and I kept saying, how are we the brand? <laughs> it was so crazy, <laughs> but uh, Josh, what do you have to say? I always, I always say like this, I love the way Nick put it, man. You have to be the community champ leader, man. Mm -hmm. You have to be out there and put yourself out there. People need to know who you are. If they don't know who you are, how are you going to be able to really service anyone if you're not really, if you're this uh, secret agent? You don't want to be the secret agent. You want to go out there and inter inter interact, <laughs> network, put yourself on the community, go sponsor some uh, events, be part of a nonprofit organization. You, that's how you start building your brand. Because yeah. once they get to know who you really are, this is when you're able to expand your brand because it's just, it's just continued to tenfold every single time, the more you yeah. put yourself out there. Which and I think it, it led it, your brand is really the qualities that you possess that people can see in you. Absolutely. And so how you show up, how, how are you showing up? Say, say that again, Rebecca. I feel like you said that beautifully. What, what, what does your brand entail there? So, you know, it, it's how you're showing up to everyone else, right? Are you kind? Are you thoughtful? Are you coming from a place of giving? Are you the guide? I mean, you know, we hear it in real estate. We're the guide. And all of, all, a lot of times we can get stuck with wanting to self-promote and look what I did. I just closed this. I just got an offer in two hours or whatever. And that's making you, right, the, 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 the champ here. And um, what we're looking to do is make the client the client is the one that we're wanting to highlight and make them the the uh, 
I forgot the word I wanted to use, but um, make them the winner, right? So we want to highlight them and, uh, and how can we give them the best service and focus on being the guide for them? What challenges do they have that we can solve? Uh, some of the things that we started doing, if you don't mind me, I'll dive into it a little bit. When go we started ahead, building our, our dive database, into it. being a community leader is we always gave back to our community in a sense of our, our past clients, our present clients, and even community events. Like this time of year, think about this, guys. What's going on this time of year? A lot of parties, a lot of celebration. And go out there and be, a, a be, be part of something like that. If you know your community is having an event, Go out there and say, hey, you know what? How can I help? I, I would love to sponsor something. Then you're putting yourself out there. You're not selling yourself. You're basically participating in yeah. something that's going to really put your brand out there. You know, and I always, I always simplify things, Nick. When you think about it, a lot of times we always worrying about the money part of it. But if you go sponsor a table for $500 just to get back to your community, think about if you, if you have 50 people walk to that table and you get one lead out of that. And that one one lead can turn out to a five hundred thousand dollar deal. Now yeah. you're now you just three times no you ten times your five hundred dollars. You just got a fifteen thousand dollar commission. And by the way, I've seen events. I mean, depending on the community, the table yeah. might be fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Yeah, you know? exactly. Sometimes it's a donation, whatever you want to give, and of course you want to give as much as you honestly can, but. The opportunity to get in front of people, that's what we're looking for. And what are we going to offer at that table? Create an experience, right? Yeah. So depending on the, I take advantage of whatever holidays are happening. And so this is an amazing time of the year where you could have uh, a, a table letters to Santa and have kids, you know, writing out their letters, have Santa present. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or if you have an office, I mean, many of us it may not be, we may be virtual, but if you have an office, Create a photo opportunity, invite your clients to come and have holiday pictures taken at your office, have, you know, hot cocoa and candy canes. That's very inexpensive, you know? Yeah. Invite the Grinch, invite Santa Claus. Now. <laughs> have invite a great them all. Time. I'm yeah. serious, invite them all, man. I mean, I, I, I think that sometimes we we tend to really like block our own, our own ideas because we're afraid that they may not work. But listen, I tell you this from, from, 16 years of experience if we would have never took these uh these uh these chances in life and really and, and um, opportunities then we wouldn't have been able to build our brand you know a lot of like rebecca started saying we are the brand you guys are the brand always remember that it doesn't matter what brokerage you belong to or what partnership or what what you own at the end of the day you are the brand and um that's something that we've learned you know throughout the years especially the last three or four years it's been very clear to us, you know, because we were able to understand what's important. What is our mission statement? What is our goals? What, what's next for us? What is yeah. the purpose of why the Solar Legacy Group exists? You know, what, what, what do we want to give back to the community? What is the purpose? When people remember us who we are, they're going to remember, okay, you know what, Rebecca and Josh were, they're the givers, they're the community leaders, they were um, authors, there was such and such, it just keeps going on and on, you know, and it's not about winning an award, it's, it's just knowing who you are. And it doesn't, it, it, you can be the most, you, it doesn't matter. This is for like new agents to like 20 year ages. So what we're trying to teach you guys right now and trying to express you guys how we were able to build our brand. That's how we were able to build it. A lot of times the, in the holidays, Halloween's, we will go and create pop buys, especially for Halloween's. Kids are excited for candy. Right. So Rebecca and I will, will do like 50, 60 pop buys and just go probably drive only like 20 miles out. And we'll go and drive straight to the doors to our clients or our past clients or even our clients that we're working with and we'll leave them candies right there at the doors for their kids if they have three kids we'll leave them candy there oh, so they yeah, will yeah. call us back and they're like wow man that was so nice of you we weren't even home but it's just it's just a it's just taking part of mm -hmm. something it's the thought mm -hmm. you know so always keep, keep that in mind. mind as well and it kind of builds your authority uh position to you to be the the go-to person yeah. in your community yeah, and you know, I think there's something really great that you guys just said here too, and I'm glad that we're already diving into this. Think about this. Most agents and most people think this is the slow season, right? Mm -hmm. Most people aren't going to be moving. Most people aren't going to be buying right now. But it's about changing that mentality instead of thinking now is the slow season. It's now is the time to pick up and get more involved get more involved in the community. There are more community events going on right now during the holiday and Christmas season than I would guess the entire year. There is so much for us to get involved in. And sometimes it's about to be, being smart enough and having the right mentality of saying, I am going to do these events now 
and I'm going to be thankful in the next three to four months. Yep. Right. Yep. So well, something, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Finish your thought. No, I was going to say, so something that you guys were talking about was about three or four years ago, you guys had that mindset shift with your brand. So walk me through like, what was that mindset shift? Because I believe a lot of us need to either have that same shift or keep going down this path. Because when you build a brand and get involved in the community, you don't get a lead the next day. Most of the time, you don't get a lead the next day, even in the next couple months, but you build something much grander. So what was that mindset shift that you guys had in that last three to four years? Well, I'll tell you, it takes, it takes being consistent and, and you're going to make mistakes in the beginning and you may not be that great in the beginning, but the more you do it, the better you become at it the more people get to get exposed, the exposure that you get. And um, the word of mouth starts running. It takes a while for that trickle effect to build up that compound effect of the daily activities that you do. They do happen if you stay consistent, because if you have a break in your habits, in your daily habits, then you're going to have a break in your business, right? Yeah. So what we do today is going to set us up for a, a great January, right? So Right now, and although may, some people may think that your sales will slump, but we've had some of our best sales in December. Uh -huh. So, um, and I remember specifically an open house that we did and literally no one, no, I shouldn't say no one. I think there was three people that came through the door that day. And we, we uh, of course, I always take advantage of uh, marketing opportunities when I'm at an open house, photos, <laughs> videos, we're having a good time. We're toasting to each other. We have a, uh, an entourage that's there. And, um, and right when I'm locking up the door, there's one couple and it was right before the holidays. And that's why I'm, I'm mentioning this yeah. one couple who was racing to get to the house before the, the closing of the open house. And like, yeah. I had already locked up. And they're like, can we please get inside? I said, absolutely. And I just yeah. opened it back up, gave them a private tour. And they instantly put an offer at listed price and they bought the house. So um, sometimes you may think that things aren't working out or that they're not going the way you had planned. But if you stay consistent and you just do the work, it's all going to happen. It's all going to fall in place. But you got to be out there. Yeah. And, and the mindset, I'm sorry, the question was a mindset shift, right? Yeah, the yeah. mindset shift on that. Um, I think was surrounding myself with people who were where I want to be and mm -hmm. emulating what they do, because I knew that I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something more. Um, but where I was before I was limited, I was in my own uh, bubble. Yeah. And so when you're, when you, when you're not in an environment where, where you can see other, other people, uh, other people's success and things like yeah. that then you only know what you know, right? And you're, you're at the top of your skill set. And you're like, how do I break through to next level? You got to get in these rooms. Yeah. You need to surround yourself like with the people. And I can see here, it looks like a good majority are, are well-seasoned agents. So um, yeah, this, this is the best place to be where you can mastermind, see what everyone else is doing and say, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that too. Yeah, I mean, Rebecca just, I mean, the last three sentences that she said, that's exactly where I was about to say is like, yeah. that's prime example. Nick could tell you, we met Nick for the first time. We were communicating. We were talking back and forth for like yeah. a year. Never met each other, but we had, right. uh, we had great communication. We met and we ran into each other in, in Vegas. Yeah. We had a great time. First thing I came up to him and said, hey, you know what? I'm having an event in Orlando and I'm already putting on the calendar. You're coming. Like, right. that's it. And because you were I'm walking by. That was, that was all in about 10 seconds. He's like, you're in coming to Orlando. Seconds. There's no question. All right, we'll see you later. Because <laughs> in my mind, I already knew the event that I wanted to work on. I just knew that Nick would be a huge asset to the event. So I was like, Nick, when you're available, is yeah, send me the link. So and, and tell me the dates. And it's about just thinking ahead, guys. You know what? It came a time that I'm I'm gonna touch on three the last three or four years. We yeah. continue, we continue building our brand due to the fact that you have to, like Rebecca said, you have to like really start collaborating and pulling the chair up to the table and getting in those rooms where you want to go. A lot of times we're our worst enemy. We have to get out there and say, you know what? I belong in that room and I'm going in that room. And I'm yeah. telling you, we've done it multiple times. Man, we've had doors closed on us and I'm like, oh, I'm getting there no matter what. We'll figure <laughs> it out. But there's times that you have to really take that leap of faith and, sit and say to yourself, where do I want to go? I need to be in that room because I want to learn something that I need, uh, that I'm struggling with in my business. So four years ago, four or five years ago, we started we wanted to switch from basically 
building a database through our referral database, which was pretty big. It is pretty big. Yeah. But now it's time to scale. Now we're going to talk about the scalability part of it. And we had to understand the importance of what was driving our market back at those times. And that was social media. That's when social media was in the up and coming five or six years ago. That's what we're talking. This yeah. is when Facebook was at, you know, basically real estate like and for friends and family right that transition bringing in all our real estate pals and right yeah. so once we started understanding the importance of being present in through social media also we made that transition we've been working with um with social media ads for like over six years right now close well five and a half years mm -hmm. and um it's helped us even expand our territory now we're going from a local market to a nationwide market yeah. So this is where, this is the way, the reason I'm saying this is because this is the way you guys have to think, especially for your seizing agents right now. You have to understand that you can't just sit in a bubble. It's time to break through that bubble and expand. So that's when we realize the importance of really getting out there, putting ourselves out there. And um, it's crazy, Nick, man, because I mean, this is where we travel everywhere. People know who we are. And it's yeah. a saying that goes like this. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. I'm gonna say it again yes. it's not who you know is who knows you man and everywhere we traveled yeah. that's that i mean people will come up to say oh my god i've seen you here i've seen you there i've seen you there and it's not really something that we we haven't done really anything different all we did was understood the importance of what's happening in our market right now in order for us to grow and see where we wanted to go at the moment you understand man. so yeah we, you know, we're very big on social media platforms, Facebook, IG, TikTok. We're implementing TikTok. Actually, YouTube is coming up also. We have a podcast. So we've implemented all throughout this last three or four years, authors, which was a blessing from God because we really did. Listen, guys, if you ever thought that you ever thought about writing a book and you feel like you, you're not, you don't have a story. No, we all have a story. My wife says it best. She says, you all, we all have a story to write. It's about picking up that pen and paper and writing the, writing it out. So yeah. together with our partners, which is right here. So, uh, you know, yeah. that, these yeah. are the things. That it's, it's about just growing and understanding how the importance of, of growing your business. You know, I think you bring up a couple good points there. You know, one, one of my favorite quotes is that the graveyard is filled with unwritten books. Mm -hmm. I feel like in untold stories, now that we have social media, untold stories on social media. And something else that you, you said was... Um, you know, like not being afraid to reach out and kick down doors. And the funny thing is, like some of us might say, like, how do I get involved in the community? These community events, there aren't even doors. You go up there and you ask to be involved and people will welcome you with open arms. Getting involved in the community is as simple as asking. We always say, if you don't ASK, you don't G-E-T. If you don't ask to get involved in the community, you won't get involved in the community period. But it's as simple as having one of those asks. And you know, I, we have some team leads on here and I'm curious to get you guys feedback on this. It's a question I get a lot from team leads, brokers, people wanting to create this brand or even solo agents who want to build a brand. So Rebecca and Osway, how important, if, if any importance, and I know my answer, but I want to get your guys, that's why you're on. How important, if any, is it for you to include your name in your brand? Um, I, th I think it's very important. I mean, I've, I've wrestled with that idea um, because I think I always wanted a brand that, that like as we built our office, that agents would want to join. And I thought that couldn't be attached to a name. But the truth is, it's how people know you. Give them the truth. And give them the truth, Rebecca. <laughs> it's how people know you. And so if, if, if you give a different name, it's, it's not you anymore. But you know, we, we did settle with Soto Legacy Group, so um, it's been an amazing, I think people relate to our to our brand, it, it makes sense for who we are, we have, have been creating a legacy, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, creating a legacy, and it really resonates with us, but I, I think it's important, you do have to use your name, um, I think that it's, it's the first thing that people see, and it, it makes you very recognizable and easy to find. And then what we want to do is simplify yes. it for the consumer. Um, so if the consumer, like right now, if we go to Instagram, so many people have, you know, number one realtor in, you know, in Oregon or wherever they're from. And uh, it's like, but who is that? <laughs> and how is that your brand? I, I remember talking to somebody who said beach, beach, sell, whatever. And I'm like, but it is her name. 
by the way, is yeah. her name. But I think it's so generic. It's so hard for people to see it. It has to be your name. And even your full name would be even better. It's you. It's who you are. Yes. Yeah. Easy for people to find you. Absolutely. I, I like that answer. That, that's what I was going to go with too. Because, you know, we get that a lot. It's like, hey, we're starting a team or I'm creating a brand. Where do I start? I'm like, well, you start with your name. I believe that's always step one. You could have a lot of sub brands underneath it. Like you guys have married in real estate. You have your new book. You have these different things underneath it. But your name is one of the most important things that you can do to stand out. And you know, something else that I think uh, I think Re Rebecca or Josue, you were talking about was on Halloween, how you went to your different past clients' homes and you gave candy for the kids. And I think too many times we had too caught up in, oh, what does the homeowner want? What does the homeowner's kids want? How can we make their kids day? So what, what are some of those little ninja strategies that you have uh, coming up here into the holidays here for Christmas? Well, I mean, that when it came to Halloween, that's one of them. Um, Christmas is, is basically the same thing. You know, sometimes these little small heart, heartfelt uh, gifts that you just called, you know, the Popeyes. Yeah. Also, um, for Thanksgiving, you know, you got um, um, pick up your pie at the store, at, at the office, man. They, some of them, we have pie giveaways, you know. Um, sometimes we even drive to their homes and give it away to them. Um, um, you know, what taking else? it simple, let's think of somebody who doesn't have an office. Yeah. Um, I've seen one of our agents who who went to a local park yeah. and set up a uh, meeting with Santa, having pictures with Santa at the park. Yeah. And then she has a table and she has the kids, you Ooh. know, creating some letters to Santa. Kids love to write their letters to Santa. And yeah. what better way to give it to Santa who's right there at the park, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. they can get their pictures taken and anyone who's at the park is welcome to participate so um i think it's brilliant and very inexpensive you don't have an office then no problem and sometimes we get caught up with if if we have the right space forget about it think, think what you have yeah. immediately available to you yeah, yeah. and um I love Same that. thing with like rebecca touched on it you know you uh photo with santa you know at the same token you can have santa claus there it's just honestly small little details, man, that'll cost you maybe a hundred, two hundred, two or three hundred dollars for a couple hours, but it's just the purpose behind it. You know, it's like I would we truly believe is like going back to the name, why it's important for you to have your name. Yeah, you're it's important to have your name, but it's also you have to have a purpose behind the reason why you're using your name and what people recognize you for who you are. People understand what are your what's your mission statement. What, what are your core values that you want to, you want to really dive deeper into that. You know, and it wasn't that we, Rebecca and I realized the importance of what our core value was. And it was like three and a half years ago, to believe it or not. And it yeah. was because one of our partners, coach John Kitchens really dove deep into it with us and said, no, this is not right. This is, you got to dive deeper. You got to dive deeper into the purpose of what you, your name stands out for it and what is your purpose in real estate or whatever whatever business you're in you know so we, that's why we were able to understand the importance of why legacy was important to us you know because you know what we want to leave a legacy to the community le legacy to our real estate community our agents our clients our children that we're passing our business path you know beyond this and our children's children so Always keep that in mind, why it's important for you guys to really understand the importance of using your name, but at the same token, understanding the importance of what people want to recognize and remember you by. Man, I think that's such a good point when it comes down to core values and mission. And we're all like, yeah, 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 that's important. Yeah, we're in business. We know that's important. How many people here on a dime right now, if I ask you, what are your core values? Can name me every single one of them? have them clearly written out where you know word for word what your core values are. How many people here, where if I ask you, what is your mission in business? Can clearly articulate your exact mission in one sentence. Your mission, if your mission is more than one sentence, then it's not a mission. Making sure that we have these things and have it clearly identified. So, you know, something that I, that I, I believe is really important is not just being able to host these events and be a part of it. I like one of the ones that you're saying is like leverage other people's events and getting involved. What are some of the ways that you make sure you collect people's information or creative way to make sure you collect people's information as they attend your guys' events? Uh, collecting information. So it could be as easy as creating a QR code where people can, um, where you can give an item of value. So it could be if you're, I don't know if you're a speaker or you're sharing anything, 
um, where you're giving away something for free that they would want to scan the QR code to receive, but in turn, they have to submit their information. That's a great way to capture, yeah. capture information. Um, of course, these events, we have to register through Eventbrite. You're already capturing information there. <laughs> yeah. um, what else is a good way? Uh, you know, something as simple as like you're saying, the pictures with Santa. All you have to do is scan this QR code to get your picture with Santa, not making it paid. Oh, Just oh, any, yes. so that yes. way you can do walk-ups, right? Yeah. Something that I love that picture with Santa idea, guys, especially coming into this new year, especially doing it out at a park. If it's snowing, great. That make even better pictures. Don't worry about the weather. Don't think the weather is holding you back. There is only one thing that would be holding you back and it would be this right here. Yeah, I forget right. we're in sunny Florida and our Santa Claus is hanging out with the palm trees, but <laughs> it's up in the snow. Mm, I don't know. Maybe you guys can share some ideas in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the snow is great for pictures. I think it makes better pictures with Santa. You got <laughs> snow all that. around you. That's that's the picturesque Santa. <laughs> even even with even with the pop buys or even the gifts that you're giving away, you can actually put your your business card there with a QR code. If not, just saying hey. Thank you so much or happy holidays with a QR code there and say, you know, please, you know, feel free to welcome, you know, follow us on this. And when you, you got to have all your social media pages driving into that QR code. That's one thing that Rebecca and I just worked on right now. And yeah. it's important, especially now that, you know, we speak on a lot of stages and sometimes everybody's like, hey, what, what is your, um, how can I follow you and everything? So we just, yeah. you know, now at the end of our presentations, we have a QR code that pops up. They take it right there and, and everything they can follow us from every one of our pages. Right. But if we're thinking about like public events, yeah. having a poster or a roll up banner that has your QR code scan here to register. Thank you for coming. We're so excited you're here. That kind of thing. Um, welcome to our, our event. Uh, that will that will help you move it along really quick. And then everyone that comes by, uh, please scan here real quick <laughs> and yeah. make them sign in. Please sign in. Uh, and, and not be afraid to ask for it either. I've seen people who are afraid to make people register. I'm like, listen, it's my event. You want to come in? You got to register. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, in a nice way. <laughs> I, I love some of the comments here. Someone said something which is best. You know, you got to you create funnels. You create um, by the way, guys, what's better than private Facebook pages for your event? Create yeah. a, a, a Facebook page. There you go. When you create your, your event page right there, everyone that's going in there, you're just picking up. That's all data that you're you're just driving into your social media and your um, database. And I like the idea also of the Facebook group. So Facebook groups, if you begin to grow your community and each one of us has an opportunity to create a community page and it could be for anything. Let's say you're into any particular hobby, whether it be I love plants and you, and you create a planting community or um, I don't know, anything that you could think of, equestrian or oh, dogs, yeah. whatever, you know, the ideas around a mom's page. And even if uh, there's a hundred other mom's page, it doesn't matter because we don't know if those other pages even get the engagement. And even if they do, they're still not you. Yeah. People will still join your community. And um, uh, I've seen people who are like sure. new to an area and they're looking to connect with like-minded people. So I had a, a Puerto Rican friend that moved to, to uh, Texas and he wanted to find other Puerto Ricans. And so he knew no one there and he created a community page and he says, I'm going to look for everything that's Latino yeah. in this community. I'm going to highlight it in my page. I'm going to give them value. And so he becomes the star of that page, the right? Green, you know? And, uh, and then people rely on him for, for information, for finding, you know, the, the, the types of foods or the, the anything that we typically like, and this could be done in any ethnicity or even just, you know, whatever, whatever you're into, um, you can be that source. When you become that source, you're the go-to person. And, and a lot of times these pages are run by people that they don't self-promote as a realtor on the page. No. However, their main page, it does show that it drives them there. So what yeah. happens is that people are curious, like who runs this page? And then they check out the main, the, the admin and they're like, oh, okay. And then as they connect with you, as they get to know you, like you, trust you, they're going to want to work with you and they will send you referrals. They will send you business. Yeah. And I love that Rebecca touched on it because that's exactly, you always remember there's just, there's different types of content where you can reach clients or consumers. That's what we call them. And the way Rebecca and I teach it to our agents and teach it around is you got to bring value, value, value proposition. You understand? 
bring value on your first video, bring value on your second video, bring value on your third video, that's when you ask. Hey, by the way, this is a soul legacy. Earn screw. that right to ask. Earn that right to ask. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times I've seen a lot of mistakes that agents make and other other social media. And trust me, I was one of them. I just, I, you know, it's just a learning curve. I'm not any better than anyone else. But there was a there, there was a set of standards that we have to follow in order for us to attract. For instance, the Facebook page. We have partners of ours that are getting four or 500 leads a week. They don't pay a dime for them. You know why? Value, value, value. Hey, how are you? This is just such and such. Now I'm going to talk about real estate. Yeah. You see, now you're driving them back into your pages and keeping them in front of you. That's when they start asking questions about, hey, you know what? I've been thinking about purchasing a property. Great. I'm going to DM you. Let's get on the call. So it, it's just, you you have to bring value first. You just can't sell yourself as a real estate agent and no one know who you really are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I see one of the questions here. They're asking if we've, if we've had events um, for sellers or buyers. Yeah. And yeah. Um, specifically the buyer one, I remember we did one the day after yeah. Christmas and all my partners were hating me. <laughs> but it was the best day to do it because no one's doing anything and they're all home. Right. So we scheduled, actually it was a church. Yeah. It was a church. And uh, that was the one day that the sanctuary would be available. Pastor said, you can come in. And, um, and I want to, I want this to be an educational event. So we basically did it interview style. We did a, a, a walkthrough of, of that journey of what it's like, you know, for people who are, are first buying their home. But before we started, we started with each one of us told our own personal story of when we bought our first home. And that's what people really connect with. So yeah. if you're doing buyer seminars and you're having a hard time connecting with people, tell your own story because yeah. people connect to stories, even if they're not in the same place that you are, but they see you as a human. They get to, to hear your voice um they, they're seeing your experience and how much you care right that it always drives you and this is why i want to help other families you know find their dream home and and they feel that but they as each one of us who were it, as part of that um, event told our stories everyone is connecting with all the panelists that were there so I think this was a very powerful technique when we did our presentation. Yeah. Everybody, by the time we got done, everybody wanted to be pre-approved. Everyone. We had our vendors <laughs> with us and they were all scheduling appointments because they wanted to see. We ended up, I think it was called. about 110 attendees, which is crazy yeah. the day after Christmas. You know, everybody's exhausted. Uh, yeah. And we ended up with 40 appointments, 40 appoint pre-approvals. And I have a funny story because... As I'm there feeling pretty confident and good about the presentation, this lady comes up to me and she says, you know, when I first saw you and, um, you know, I told myself, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good at this time. She was yeah, yeah. I told myself, she's not going to scam me. And I thought, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? You think yeah, damn straight, I'm not going to scam you. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to scam me. Right. But you know what happened? She got taken advantage of during the crash of the uh, economy in 2008 wow. she yeah. lost everything and there are still people who are afraid to buy homes because they yep. lost it all during that time and it was because we went in there it's because we shared our stories it's the pastor himself shared his story the pastor's wife happens to be an agent and she shared her story as well and she connected so much that it changed how she felt and she was willing to give this a try again and and here's here's here, here's the, the, like the most important part of this, this story, guys, is for everyone that purchased a house with the Soto Legacy Group, we donated 50% of our commission back to the church. Yeah, from mm. that this revenue, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, so now you know exactly, now, back to the church. now you know exactly how they felt like, wow, they came with a giving heart. They didn't come here to yeah. sell us anything. They, they want to help mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So 15% of the commission went back to the uh, church. And Rebecca, what you said too about that person situation, we never assume that we know the reason why they're not buying or working with us. When you assume you make an ass out of you and me, 
right? Mm -hmm. Don't assume in those situations. But Jose, there was something that you said that I want to touch on because I think it was absolute gold and something clicked for me. So the glue of this attraction cycle that we talk about, right, guys, is like, like Jose said, you have to have your social media on everything that you do. Like on the QR code, having your social media on there. If you guys have been on calls like this before, you know, what I say is your social resume is your social media. Your resume for people want to work with you. A great test for everybody here to do is bring out your phone, go to Instagram and scroll solely based on the information that you see. Would you work with you? Mm -hmm. Same thing with Facebook. Solely based on what you see on Facebook, would you work with you? That is where people go. Even if they meet you in person, they're going to look you up on social media. But a glue of this attraction cycle is just think, guys, if everybody you meet has your social media links because they got them when you receive them and they all go back to social media and you constantly post, that's how you'll be able to attract business. If you don't give them your social media, you're going to end up losing them in the cycle. If you give them their, your, your website, great. They check it once and they never go back again. They'll forget the name of the website, but on social media, when you post and you guys become friends, they see it all the time. When you guys get involved in more community events, they see it all the time. Don't miss out on that little piece that can make a huge difference. Everything that you do should have a QR code going to your social media, going to a page that has your social media. If you don't, you will be forever. I believe you'll be forever chasing. And the world that we're moving towards on social media, in the social media world, you'll be forever chasing. But a great test to do is go to your Facebook solely based on what you see on your Facebook page. Would you work with you? Would you call you? Because that's what people are basing their expertise on. So something I want to get to, there's a question that we had earlier, is what are some of the ways that you guys have content that allows you guys to stand out? And I know you guys get involved in the community. So how do you, how do you tie in the community and the content to stand out on social media? So I'm going to answer that question, but I also see they, a specific question. How do we advertise for the buyer's event? And there's a yeah. few different ways. I'm going to tie that with the question you just asked me. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, um, this particular one that I was just sharing, it was a church. So mostly it was the church people. So that's a really great place to start yeah. is with churches. And uh, the, the, the church was able to get, I mean, there was about 80 people that day at that event. So this week, like right after Christmas, everybody's home. And so uh, some <laughs> of us just want to party and relax and, you know, take the holiday off. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you, it, you know, the truth is you're, you might be missing out on a great opportunity. Also, the next one is the day after New Year's. And you think that people are recovering from parties and such. And there may be those people too. But yeah. they will show up because they are. They ha everybody has that day off. The day that people are off, <laughs> generally from from work, yeah. is a perfect day to hold your event. Do so a Black go Friday planning event. them now. We did a Black Friday, uh, <laughs> but anyways, the um, the so a few different ways. Um, you can door knock, circle prospect. Uh, you can do a Google. Um, it's going up Google Geographic. Facebook ads. Do geographical ads. Um, on uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, on your personal social media pages, asking or, or through your database, right? And, and here's another one that I wanted to tie in also, like everything that you guys are promoting on your business pages on Facebook, right? Everybody promotes on the business page. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everything that you should be promoting on your, on your Facebook business page, but you can use that to, to, put it in your database. So if I have a, a, a open house that I'm, open house, excuse me, the buyer's event that I'm offering on Facebook, yeah. I can put that in an email for my database to invite the database to come over as well. Mm -hmm. And you can do that just re repurposing a lot of the information that you're sharing online. Make sure that the people, because the people who are in your database, they're not on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. So that's another opportunity to kind of repurpose mm -hmm. that information and make yeah. it come for you. you can make it a blog you can make it a newsletter you could do your your monthly marketing reports make sure that it's on social media but make sure that also gets and, into your database and yeah i love that rebecca touched on database and even your past clients guys i mean think about what happened between 20 and 22 that was like there was a market that we really haven't seen let's be honest with you yeah but that was when people when, when a lot of these sellers that you sold properties to say three or four years ago for these veterans that are on this zoom right now that's when we took advantage of the, of, hey, you know what? I remember you saw, I sold you this property three or five years ago. Do you know the value of the property? Oh yeah, I know it went up. Really? 
So we that we would take advantage and sit down with them, and they'd be like, "Whoa, one hundred fifty thousand dollars, yes." So yeah. we would turn around, sell their home, and they would purchase another one at the time. It's about really staying, kind of staying ahead of the game, you know. And the the tying in with the question that you had asked, Nick, the we use we do community type of videos, also testimonial videos, educational, educational videos. videos. So what we do is on Facebook, we start with a generic ad, right? Because most people who are looking to buy a house, they're not looking for the realtor first. They don't, <laughs> they don't care about your brand. They don't care about your name. They don't care how many years experience you have or how many clients or homes you've sold. They, they might later, but that's not where they start, right? So we have a, a generic ad, you know, buy homes here or whatever. And once they click in there, now they fall into my retargeting funnel. And in the retargeting, they're going to see an educational video. They're going to see a testimonial. They're going to see a community focused video. So what happens is now they're trapped in my, in my funnel and they're constantly seeing all of this. So the branding yeah. continues. And if they know your name, they can find you faster. Right. Yep. And, uh, and so people are not always ready right away, but they, they will be at some point. So the point is to get that branding out there put the invitation for your events out there, make sure that you're, that you're utilizing, you know, Facebook and Instagram ads. One of, one of the ads that we ran probably about six, no, about a year ago. So a little bit over seven, no, seven, seven, eight months ago, we yeah. ran an ad of on sellers because we realized that the market was changing already. Yeah. What we did was we, we were like three months ahead of the game. And um, cause we, we seen what was happening with the change in the market. So we took advantage at that moment and we did, an add on sellers that are afraid of really at the moment, how we were able to help them sell their property and move them and transition them into another property with a smooth transition with a post occupancy. And all of a sudden our phone started ringing off the hook. Hey, how did you do this? How did you help this person? Because that's our biggest fear. We can't find a home. So we were able at the same token, when they clicked on that ad, Nick, they got they got a retargeting ad of one of my partner lenders talking yeah. about the cash cash offer uh, program that they offer. So once they see that, then the retargeting ad comes back and say, "Hey, here's a testimony of one of our past clients that we did exactly what I just spoke about, and he spoke about in details. I and we guided him through it through the whole interview of what he had to say step by step. Then it ended with, "Hey, if you want more information about it." please feel free to reach out to the Soto Legacy Group and that's it. It's very simple. It's about bringing value, value, value. Mm -hmm. Then you ask. You know, I think that's a big portion of this too. And you know, there, there, was, there was something else that you guys were talking about too with just the overall branding and making sure that you stay in front of people. Um, I think a big part of it is the consistency. And also what Rebecca said is most people look for homes first. And I think a big way that we could even start training people's mind to be different Instead of only posting just listed and just sold um, and just bought, when you help somebody with a purchase, get in front of the home and tell them as a real estate agent what you did to actually get them in the home. Yeah. Train people to look for you first. Mm -hmm. If you just post picture, three, three bed, two baths, so-and-so square feet, we're training people that the home is the most important part of the deal. Right in line with what you guys are saying that your name is the most important part. So is the actual job that we do. We always say value unarticulated is value unappreciated. Yeah. If somebody just sees a picture of a home and two weeks later, a picture like a picture of a home just listed, two weeks later, just sold, they think it was that easy. Yeah. Wow. You just posted a picture and got it sold? No wonder there's so many for sale by owners, guys. All they see is pictures all the time. And that's how easy it is. You got to take on the journey. Told him how you had, I know, I know host Sway's phone rings 50 times in a day. Tell him how you had to do 50. You had to take 50 phone calls with more offers than you ever thought you could get on one home. Tell him about what you actually had to do. You start articulating your value. People will choose you and then help. The find the home that well. you helped overcome. So I yeah. think that's the, the important yes. part is that people connect to stories and how did you help this person and uh, what value did you bring to them so did they yeah. have a challenge you know with their credit did they have a challenge with you know being a, uh, a, a self-employed person and they're you know no pnls and all this stuff and so you know how do you how do you help people how do you help people that um you know think about the challenges i guess that goes when with knowing who your client is yeah. and uh and so 
I, identifying who that ideal client that you would like to work with is, yeah. and then what are the challenges that they face? Yeah, I, and I'm glad that uh, that was a great that was great that. because that's exactly where I was going to drive. I think about guys, everything was happening right now. What is what is the biggest challenges for buyers right now? Put it on the chat. Some of your buyers. What do you guys think? What do you, what are what are buyers seeing, and especially what are we seeing on social media all the time? What are we seeing on well, seeing in the news and all these places? What what well, are they saying about the market? The biggest challenge that they're there you go. That's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Interest rates. Yeah. Well, why don't we get? Why don't we give them some value in reference to interest rates? Why don't we go back and tell them, hey guys, you know what? We got two special programs coming up right now. We got a three, two, one buy down program that you can be able to get in your home at at a four percent interest rate, and then slowly progressing in the, into the next two years at the six. But guess what happens in three years down the road, guys? Refis. So that four can turn into a two or three, but you're able to get them into a house at a four, you know? And then you got the other programs that you can, you can uh, for sellers right now, and I'll tell you this right now, I don't know who's a listing agent right here, but I'm doing this. My listing agents, my sellers, I sit down with them and I give them two different methods. First method is we can go this route with it. We're going to list your property and slowly price, you know, price reduction depends how we go back. We revisit every seven to 14 days we sit down. Or why don't we do this? We price it right. We offer them a 3% seller's concession, which is going to be able to help them buy their interest rate rate down or help them with their closing costs. That way they have extra money to bring down their interest rate from like a six to a four, still have enough money to cover some of their interest rates. And your sellers are still walking away with what they want in net or more. It's about bringing different varieties, different challenges that, that sellers and buyers are facing at this market right now. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, here we go. We're bringing value, bringing value, bringing yeah, value. And, I, and I'm going to say something different than what most people you let, that will tell you on social media right here too is, I don't really give people the entire solution. Guys, if you give people the entire solution, they think they know what they need to do. Instead yeah. of just telling people exactly what a three, two, like, like host was saying, that is the solution, right? Instead of like going into it's like, hey, I know you're hearing that interest rates are high right now. Most people are telling you not to buy. It looks like it's going to be a higher monthly pay payment. We actually have a program that can actually help you get lower interest rates. If you guys want to know what their program is, give me a call. If we address people's problems, we address their pain. What do people run away from? They walk towards pleasure. They run from pain. If you can clearly yeah. identify the pain of the marketplace and just let people know you have a solution and just DM me if you want to hear what that solution is, you'll have more people reaching out to you than if you just go on there and try and explain actually explain real estate. Look, most people failed high, high inventory, low inventory class in high school when there was a question on their test when they studied for it. They definitely don't remember it now. Our main job, like you're saying, add value. I think the most valuable thing we can do is getting people to actually reach out to an expert. Mm -hmm. It's not explaining everything on social media. We like to say the minimal effective dose. What's the smallest amount they need to know in order to reach out to me and get their problem solved? Yeah. Right, right. So we have some questions here. I want to make sure we get to some of these questions as we're wrapping up this call here with you guys. So one of the questions my man Zambrano was asking, have you hired VAs to help you with setting appointments? And then what was the process and the training efforts on that? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, between eight to 10 VAs that I have right now running at the same time making calls. Um, yeah. And AI too, artificial intelligence. They, they, you know, they just basically follow up on everything. Yeah. Um, they we bring them all the way once they're um we set appointments with them then they bring it into my crm manager i have a database manager that runs my my operations and basically once the data uh manager has the appointments he sets it up on my calendars or one of or one of the agents the buyer's yeah. agents calendars yeah. so it, that could that's a process man because uh, when, when it comes to the vas you have to make sure that you're training your vas to run the operate your systems the way you want them to be run not the way someone else is training them to do it. So yeah. my 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 advice is, if you're going to bring on and hire on an I, ISA, you have to make sure that you take the time to fully train them exactly how you want them to follow up, how to speak to the client. Have a script, LP Mama. We use LP Mama. We 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 use a uh, another one called Agent Agent Follow Up right now that I just put in. As a matter of fact, the great part about that one is when they get on my calendar automatically they get, if there's a buyer's consultation set up on my calendar, 
they automatically get a 10, 10 uh, question questionnaire emailed to them and text to them to answer prior to me meeting with them. So they may be the same questions, but I know that exactly when I go into that meeting, I'm going full throttle into the meeting, yeah. not getting to know someone because I already know exactly what their needs are. So that was something that we just implemented into our uh, systems also right now. I want to take it back a step further because, and we have a playbook on, on training the, the yes. FSA, but before you get to the training is the hiring process. Yeah. So I think it's, it's asking as many questions, hire slow, fire quick, yep. right? But um, make sure that you have the right personality type that this person can handle that job, um, that uh, they, they possess the qualities that you know that they need to be able to, to do it and, and get advice. If you know someone that can, uh, you can ask questions, of course, we're available as well, but um, that can help you out in that process. Um, certainly don't be quick to pull the trigger on somebody that you're not sure that you haven't vetted properly. Um, yeah. VAs, from like other countries are amazing. I, and and they some of them have impeccable work ethic. Yeah. I like that a lot. But you still have to check out, you know, their their level of interest, their level of knowledge and things like that. And and so um and then gauge their their um or see if they have references. I don't know. Yeah. But, um yeah, don't settle for one. Like um my my data manager, we went through three, I have to do disk profile. Yeah, we do disk profile. This profiles on them. We um we actually interviewed three of them, not just one. We went through the vetting process. If we brought back the top two, we went through their interview again, and that's when we decided with the with the one that we went with. Yeah. Um, he's been with us. Wow, it's going on two and a half years right now. I'm um, actually he I actually moved him up in position. He's actually my data my data manager now. He nice. oversees basically. I trust him on my operations. We just went out of the country for two yeah. weeks, and it's just I didn't even lose a step, you know. And um, yeah. and I tell you, it's just take your time because when you're hiring, it's like Rebe Rebecca said, take your time hiring, but you'll fire quickly, you know, because yeah. not everyone is going to be the right person for the position. But I can tell you this right now, you will find that right person. Man, and I'll tell you what, something But I used to run a, a call center and we had all virtual workers. I just put a link in the chat, guys, timedoctor.com. Timedoctor.com, it, it's I think it's like 30 bucks, 40 bucks a month. But what it does is you can you get to have people virtually clock in, clock out. It takes screenshots of their screen while they're working. It tracks the mouse yep. and keyboard movement only while they're working. But that's a way you can virtually that's track. Look, I was never on there like going through and seeing, oh, what websites were you on? But at the end of the month, it gives you a, a rundown. As they were clocked in, here were the websites that they were on and how long they were on them. And you can track, if somebody says they work this amount and you don't believe them, you can go right to Time Doctor and check and see exactly what they were doing. It checks yeah. keyboard movement, mouse movement. So now I like to look at it this way, trust, but verify. Look, man, I trust you, but sign your ass in because I, I want to make sure that you're getting this done, right? Yeah. But that Time Doctor is huge. We still use it to this day. And I'll tell you what, if you're planning on paying people hourly, I, I don't recommend, if you don't have Time Doctor, it can make it very difficult. Time Doctor is a game changer when it comes to virtual tracking. And again, when it comes into how long did you guys work this week? I don't, I don't have to check anywhere else. I go right to Time Doctor, see how long you clocked in for. Great. That's how much you're getting paid for. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. We have time right there. You got time for one more question here and let's get to, I thought this was a good one here. Um, so as far as your social media help with your virtual assistants, what kind of so social media help do you guys get? Um, if any, for your. Social so right now we don't have any, so we are going to be implementing that that's on our business plan yeah. for this year. And so far, most of it's done mostly through us. And yeah. uh, we've had some help in the past. And so we are just kind of fine tuning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, there's Whitley, but Whitley is more of the Facebook ads and not yeah. so much our social media posting. So I don't know if that's what they meant. But So, so what I would say with, with this VAs, um, guys, stay away from somebody who can just make generic posts. I don't believe that really adds value. It's not you. It's not your brand. It's not your story. It'll when you should hire your VA is when you want to repurpose your content, yeah. take a lot of the videos that you shot, break them down, mix them up. That's when a VA should be looked to be hired. 
Stay away from companies who just post a picture that's generic and writes a generic copy. You will not stand out. You'll be just like everybody else. Nobody will follow you. And if anything, you will detract people because they won't want to look at your content. One of my mentors um, that recently I was in in her masterclass, um, what what they're doing is her local agents or not agents, uh, staff, marketing. They marketing staff. They will do all the content filming her, following her everywhere she goes, and then on a Trello board, they create a to do list, yeah. uh, working on and done list, and so they have uh, all the 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 film will be dropped in a Google Drive. Yeah. And so this way they can pass that project off to the VAs. Yeah. The VAs are creating reels and, and YouTube content and everything else. Yeah. And they are just overseeing the, the, the staffers are overseeing the projects that the VAs are yeah. working on. Um, but I thought that was, it, to me, that was insightful to see how they manage that because I, I just, yeah. all of that kind of blows my mind. I'm like, it's so much. And as <laughs> filters, we're, we're everything in the beginning, right? Until, until we, are ready to hire someone else right. to do it. And that sometimes it's hard to um, articulate what it is you want these people to do. So I found that very valuable because it helps you get organized through a Trello board that you're you're managing that project on. Yeah. Trello is free and um, and using a Google Drive to be able to pass the, the, um, the yeah. videos to it. So- yeah, one of the things that we do also, Nick, is that um, we have a video guy that follow us so when we, especially when we're speaking or we're at an event and all that stuff. And we kind of break it breakdowns. We do different videos for IG reels or whatever, TikTok. but what, even when they're not with us, we'll just basically shoot it ourselves yeah. and I just send it right to them and they break it down for us, you know, yeah. and we have a chief marketing officer that helps us with all the social media platforms and everything, you know, something that we've learned on our own, by the way, guys, like we've learned the first step that, that, that I would advise every one of you to know is that learn everything on your own first before you pass it on to someone else. That way you understand and know the process of what it takes for you to, for you to really, you know, snip a video. How long yeah. does it take? What's the purpose of it? What's the reason why you're doing these videos? Because if you pass that along, they don't even know what you're going to, you know, they're going to say, well, what do you want me to do with this? You know, you know, yeah. so that way you learned, I learned everything on our own. We did everything on our own. And now it's easier for us to, teach it to someone else man thank god i have michael for that <laughs> but guys <laughs> something else to think of too is just batch content you know when you sit down how many videos if you want to do a video session i i don't i don't remember the last time i sat down and only shot one video just sitting down and i'll shoot 15 videos within one session and then having that in a board that can be repurposed but yep. guys i want to thank you guys so much so guys just a couple of quick things the person who invited you if you guys want the replay or we'll be sending out some downloadables If you want the replay, make sure you reach out to the person who invited you. Make sure you thank them because I'll tell you what, Rebecca and Josue really brought it for today's call. I want to thank Rebecca and Josue so much for taking time out of your guys' busy day. I know you guys are traveling everywhere to join us and add value, what you guys were just saying, add value to the real estate community. And here's what we're going to do, guys. We're also going to include their Instagram here for you as well. Uh, Rebecca, what, what is your Instagram? Rebecca Soto underscore legacy. Rebecca Soto underscore legacy. And then what is yours, Josue? It's underscore Josue. Uh, hold on. Josue Soto legacy. I keep forgetting, dude. Hold on a second. I got it. I'm putting it on the chat. Oh, man. I got it. I got it. Underscore Josue Soto underscore legacy. And then we got uh, married, married in real estate also. Guys, if you, if you got some value out of this, take a picture of this, screenshot it, tag us on Instagram. Let us know you got some value. And again, guys, if you guys want the recording, make sure you reach out. Thank the person who invited you. Rebecca and Josue, thank you so much for coming on, guys. I'm really excited, excited to see where you guys are going in this new year. I hope everybody has a great holiday. We'll see you guys thank on the next one. Bye. Bye.